there's, I think, six major speeches by the Prime Minister and array of uh, array of other Cabinet Ministers on Brexit coming over the next week or two. What are we going to learn from these? Well, I think what the public want is they want the vision and they want some meat on the bones. Um, and that's what they're going to get. Uh, and that will involve, at the end of uh, the process, uh, the Prime Minister setting out what that new partnership will look like. But it will also give some detail on our trading ambitions and relationship, on what it means for devolution and many other aspects. So, so for instance, if you're a, a major company watching very, very worriedly this whole process, um, we, we, we had the Japanese ambassador talking about Japanese companies simply pulling out if they don't get the kind of tariff-free access that they expect and want. They will get answers within the next couple of weeks. They will get some answers. At least from what they we will want get to some do. Answers. We won't get the negotiation. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's the key difference. So uh, I'm afraid this is a negotiation. There will be... But at uh, least they'll know be... what our position exactly. is. Exactly. Okay. And that, I think, will um, uh, is, is what business is, mm. is looking for. Yeah. We've got to give uh, business, but other organisations as well, uh, a flavour of what they need to plan for uh, and some certainty about what we're looking for. And what perhaps they're most concerned about right at the moment is the transition period. Do you think it's a given that it's going to happen at all? I, I, my personal view is I do because it's in our interest and it's in the EU's interest. So I think, I think common sense will prevail. Michel Barnier said it's not a given and he's laid down some very clear conditions and said if you don't abide by those conditions during the transition period I have behind me a whole series of punishments that I can then impose upon you and you can say nothing about them. Do you think he's being at the very least discourteous to this country? Well, I would, I would agree with what uh, David Davis has, has said uh, on that matter. But what I would say to the, to the public mm. is that actually the, the other nations involved in this are mm. uh, very pragmatic and, and have not been impressed with some of the language uh, that the Commission has used. So ultimately, this is about what's good for us mm. uh, and what's good for the remainder of the EU. And in terms of the rights of EU citizens coming here during the transition period. The Prime Minister has been very, very clear that that changes. We've left the EU. It's a new situation. Is that a red line for this country? Well, it is, it is what we are setting out in our, our position. Again, all of this is a negotiation, but I know that... So it's the, not necessarily... The... We, we could fault... Frankly, up to now, we fault on everything. We say this is a red line, no. we're going to do it. And then they say, no, 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 this is what we... And then we fold, and then things move on. Well, we're, we're going to be setting out some more detail about our position on all of these issues over the, the coming months. Um, but that is, that is something that, that we are looking for. Um, ultimately, uh, it will be the negotiation, uh, the, the phrase that's trotted out, nothing is decided till everything is decided. Um, but I think that, that these things make sense um, and we're, we're right to ask for them. I don't know if you had a chance to hear Anna Subri with Chukka Muna earlier on. Do you get the sense that this is driving the stresses and strains in your party now to breaking point? I, I don't uh, think that at all. Um, the, parliamentary, <laughs> the parliamentary party uh, mm. and the cabinet um, are behind the prime minister. We, we are trying to get the best deal possible for the UK. Um, I have great respect for, for both um, Chucker and, yeah. and Anna, but we did have a referendum. We are leaving. What, what, whichever and way the... people voted, we all have an interest in getting the mm. best deal possible, and that's what we're doing. And the last time we were talking, some way back now, is actually during the referendum campaign. I don't know if you remember it, but you were full of confidence and optimism about this. You and people like you never told us how hard it was going to be. Well, I think no, no one thought it was going to be a, a walk in the park. Mm. But actually, I think once you get past all the, mm. the, uh, the Westminster bubble and you look at actually what are the practical things that need to happen, what is ultimately good for us, for our security and prosperity, and what is good for the remainder of the EU, for their security and prosperity, actually, they're, they're the you same You still things. remain chipper. Okay. I am. I am. Penny Morden, thanks very much indeed.